Since both functions reference the variable e, we need to make sure that e remains a shared resource. To do this, we're going to add the qualifier volatile to the declaration of e and make sure that it's a static integer that is available to all threads. Now, if you actually look at the functional use of the variable e, it's being read within both threads, so we don't need to make any coordination or synchronization when accessing the variable e. When the main routine begins execution, because of the declaration of the variable x, that is placed on the runtime stack for the main routine. Each function call that's been given to a thread actually references the array x through a pointer. Within each function then, x is going to be thought of as a shared resource. Again, like the variable e, if you examine the source code of the two functions, you'll notice that x is read-only. And so we don't need to coordinate or synchronize the execution of the threads to make sure that we get the right values in or out of that X shared array. But what about private variables? Well, any variable that's sent to a threaded function through its parameter list, the copy within that function is going to be automatically made private. Also, any declarations of variables within those threaded functions will also be private to the thread that is executing that function. So in our case here, we see that the variables k in the parameter list and the integer a that's declared in each function will all be private to each thread. So any updates to those variables will be done to the local or private copies to those threads. From these examples, we can see that all static variables or all heap variables or any variable that's on the runtime stack of a function that calls a threaded function are all going to be shared by default. Examples of private variables are any variable that has been declared within a function that's threaded or the parameters that are sent to a threaded function. From the domain decomposition example, we also know that any time we divide up a loop amongst threads, we're going to have to give each thread a private copy of the loop iteration variable. If you remember back to the beginning of this module, we had a model of our multi-core processor where we had several cores, each with private memory, and each of those cores having access to shared memory. We can take that same model and now make a threading model that corresponds to it. Threads now are assigned to cores. The private variables would be assigned to the private memory, and the shared variables would now occupy the shared memory available. So in summary, we've described the shared memory model of parallel programming. We've described the differences between the fork join and the general threading model. We've demonstrated how to implement domain decomposition and task decomposition in threads. And we've also shown how to decide whether a variable needs to be shared or must be private for each thread. If you need to know more about these topics, please consult one of the references that are listed here. Now that we've completed the lecture portion of this module, it's time to do the lab portion. In the labs, you'll be given a series of code examples. You'll need to decide whether a task decomposition or a domain decomposition will be best, where the threading should be executed, and whether variables should be made shared or remain private. Thank you for your attention this module. Part 3 is next.